Hey, what's up guys? This is Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. In this tutorial, we're going to be making a flat design stop sign. I'm having a lot of fun with these flat design tutorials lately, and I know a lot of you have been learning like Illustrator for the first time from them. I do have like an Illustrator for Beginners course and a Photoshop for Beginners course. They are free on Skillshare. Links in the description. Go check them out if you want to. Totally free. Just sign up with your email or whatever and take the course. Pretty good stuff. A lot of things that I think that everyone should know that is learning Illustrator or um, learning Photoshop and really everyone should know if they are a designer anyway. Alright, um, let's get into it. So flat design stop sign. I'm gonna start with a new document. That new document is 1920 by 1080 but I'm gonna kind of ignore that artboard and just go over here into our big gray space. Why? Because stop signs have a white outline around them and that won't show up on the white background. We'll make a new background later. Okay, let's get started. A stop sign is how many sides in America, by the way? You guessed it, it's eight sides. So we gotta get that polygon tool out. And if we just click on our artboard, or our space here, it's gonna pull up uh, an option for the polygon tool. And we can make a radius, let's just do 150. I don't even know where that's gonna end up. But we want it to be eight sides because a stop sign is an octagon so hit OK and we have a little octagon out here now the other way to create that is to click on your canvas and drag with that polygon tool notice it's already on an octagon that's because we just chose eight sides but if I hit the up and down arrow keys it increases and decreases the number of sides in my polygon so we can get to an octagon just like that, and then we can hold shift to get it aligned just right up and down, um, or you can let go of shift and just kind of spin it around if you wanted to. And then when you let go, it's gonna create that shape. So those are two ways, but the easier way is just to click and uh, select your amount of shapes. Okay, so I've got this octagon out here. I'm gonna click on it with the direct or the selection tool, and I'm gonna scale it up with the corner here. Now notice it gets all skewed, that's because we need to hold shift while we scale, and I really like to also hold option and alt, or alt, I should say, uh, to scale from the center out. So shift and option, or shift and alt if you're on Windows. Scale that sucker up and there is our stop sign. Let's go ahead and finish this guy out. All we really need is a fill color and a stroke color. If you're in the old CC, you're gonna see it up here. If you're in the new Illustrator CC, you're gonna see it over here to the right. Uh, so we've got the fill, let's select a new color. Uh, we're just gonna select a red, but that's a super, super hot red. So I'm gonna change that in my favorite way, which is to go up to window, down to color. It's gonna pop out the color panel somewhere. And in this color panel, I like to double click on this swatch and that opens up the color picker. My favorite colors lately are not so saturated. They're like the muted colors, that flat design look you see everywhere. That tends to be in, so, so up and down here, it's white to black, right? So somewhere here in the gray space, and then you sort of saturate it a little bit more, is some of those muted tones, not so, not so saturated. You can even see the difference between the color that we're currently have selected and then the color that we, uh, we had selected prior, which is that like really hot RGB red. Uh, so I want that more muted tone. I'm gonna hit okay, and that changes that swatch or that color of that fill. Perfect. The other thing we want to do with this guy is actually edit the stroke to be white because a stop sign has like a white stroke around the outside of it. So I'm going to click on that stroke and we're going to change it to maybe something like five points. We'll see, we'll see where that ends up. We might actually do more based on the size of this uh, stop sign, just depending on what size your sign is or what size your shape is. All right, so instead of black, we're gonna click on that and I'm gonna go white. I'm just gonna go straight white with this one. And I think I wanna do something more like 10 points for that stop sign outer edge, maybe 15. Let's do 15, that looks about right. Now the other thing I wanna do with this, which will come up later, but we'll go ahead and do it now, is I wanna change how that stroke appears on my shape. And what I mean by that is if I click back on that stroke icon, I bring up those stroke options, uh, you can align the stroke to what is currently the center of the edge of our shape. You can align it to the inside or align it to the outside. Because we're gonna add a tiny shadow later, I'm gonna align it to the inside. And that makes it easier to sort of contain that stroke within the shadow. All right, so there we go, we're just about there. Uh, why don't we just go ahead and add the stop to the stop sign and then we'll do the, the, the post. All right, so we're gonna go over here to the type tool. The shortcut key for that is T. Just click anywhere on your canvas and you can start to type. 
Obviously, I want to type stop. I'm going to type all capital letters STOP. And it's real tiny down there. If I just go click on my selection tool, I can then grab the edge of this. Instead of dealing with the size of the font, I can just scale this up on my own. Once again, you're going to skew it if you just scale it like that. So hold shift while you're scaling it up and you can sort of see how big that is scaling. So we're going to hold shift again to scale it up a little bit more. I'm going to switch my font to something like, how about Babus New? I know that it's kind of like a, a taller font and we'll, it, it'll, it'll go with that minimal design a little bit better. Let's do the regular, kind of a little bit bolder. We're going to switch the fill over here to white, just like the edge of our stop sign. And then we're going to, uh, I'm actually going to show you, go up to window, down to character, or I'm sorry, down to type, and then character. And that's going to pull out the character panel. So I'm showing you this because this is really important for people when they're dealing with type and they may not really know what I'm looking at over here. But on this character panel, you can change the font, you can change the weight of the font, and then the size, the letting, which is the spacing between the lines, you can kern between letters, you can also set the tracking for the entire piece. Let's set the tracking to 50, and that's going to space out my letters. Uh, I can enter that with by hitting tab after I type in 50. And then when I'm looking at this, I'm kind of thinking that the O and the P need a little bit of kerning. That's where this guy comes in. I can just click, I double clicked into that and I selected between the O and the P. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to hit the up arrow a couple times. And I'm actually going to hold shift while I do that. And that's going to change it by increments of 10. And it kind of bumped that out a little bit. We'll bump it out a little bit more. So 20 on that guy. And then I might do 10 between the T and the O. So what I'm doing there is I'm kerning between the letters because the font isn't perfect. And I think the spacing needs to be tweaked a little bit. And I like where it's at now. S-T-O-P, all those letters look very evenly spaced. So let's bring this guy on top of our stop sign. About in the middle, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to scale him up again by grabbing this corner with the double arrow, holding Shift and Option or Alt if you're on Windows. And just scale him up to kind of size him in here. That's about right, I think. Okay, now this is kind of an interesting part. So, by the way, I'm hitting spacebar to use the hand tool to kind of move around my document here, but most of you probably know that. Um, I'm going to hold Option or Alt and duplicate this piece out here. So I'm going to keep my type out there. That's what I do a lot when I work in Illustrator. I keep the editable type out there. This guy I'm going to outline. And we can do that by going up to Type, and then down to create outlines. The shortcut key for that is shift command O or shift control O. Uh, that's one I definitely know by heart. So now we've got outlines instead of actual letters that we can type. But the good thing about this is there's no weird spacing. Now it's just shapes. So I can take this selection, which is now grouped together, all these letters. I can shift click and select also the stop sign. So I have both of them selected. I can also just click and drag through here with the selection tool and it's gonna, it's gonna grab everything within uh, what I just selected there. Next, I'm just going to not hold anything. I'm just gonna click on the stop sign. Notice there's a darker blue line around it now or a thicker blue line. That means I'm aligning to a key object. So I'm gonna go up to window down to align. It's gonna pop out our alignment panel. Notice down here, align to currently key object. The key object is the stop sign. We are aligning the letters stop to the stop sign. I want it to be in the exact center. So I'm going to grab horizontal align center and click it. I'm going to do vertical align center and click it. And now the stop is exactly in the center of the stop sign. That was a lot. Woo. Okay. Now let's do the post. So the post is just going to be a rectangle um, of a certain length. And we're going to do, let's click on this, uh, polygon tool again and go over to the rectangle tool. By the way, you can click and hold on that. Probably in the beginning you may have figured that out. I'm not sure. I already had the polygon tool selected, but you can click and hold to select all these different tools. I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool. Shortcut key is M. I'm gonna just create a long skinny rectangle like this by clicking and dragging. And I'm just gonna eyeball the width to something like that right there. And with this guy, we're going to change him to be a darker gray. So maybe we'll just pick like this dark gray right there. Just kind of picking one. And then what I want is, you know how those posts, they have like all these little holes in them? I'm gonna create those little holes with the ellipse tool. So L is the shortcut key for the ellipse tool. I've got it. I'm going to just draw a tiny little circle. And this is hard to see, but I'm also holding shift. 
There's a little circle created, and I'm just gonna let go. Let's go ahead and zoom in. The shortcut key for that is Command Plus or Control Plus if you're on a Windows. All right, there's our little circle. And what I wanna do with him is grab the selection tool, and I'm gonna bring this little circle over to the center of this post. Notice all these pink lines. They are smart guides. You can turn them on. They really help you line things up. Go up to View, down to Smart Guides, and check mark that to turn them on. All right, I can't really see this guy. Let's change his fill to white. There he is. And now let's create a bunch of them going down this post. So I'm gonna hold Option or Alt to duplicate him down. You can also hold Shift while you do this to make sure you keep him in line with the other circle. And I'm just gonna give it some spacing right there and let go. Now what we're gonna do is basically duplicate this a bunch of times. And I can hold Command or Control and press D and it's gonna continue to duplicate that last transformation. So I just keep pressing Command and D, Command and D, all the way down. It's, I'm just pressing it, pressing it, pressing it, pressing it. Uh, or Control and D if you're on Windows, of course. And this is taking forever. Is there ever an end? Yes, there is. Okay, so I'm just gonna let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. There, it's close. Now what I'm gonna do is take this bottom one, click it, select it, Hold shift, select the post itself. So I have the circle and the post selected. Click on the post. Now we're aligning to that key object, if you remember. I'm gonna grab that alignment panel again, and I'm gonna do this one here, which is like vertical align to bottom. So it's gonna take that circle and line it up to the bottom of this post. Now I'm just gonna click on this circle and press the up arrow key, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times. Um, we'll do a little something different on that <laughs> on the next part, but that's, that's, um, that's spaced out 10 from the bottom. Now let's go back up to the top, and we're gonna grab this guy. Same thing, hold shift, click on the post, and then click on the post again to align to that key object. And we're gonna align it to the top this time, not the bottom. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna click it 10 times, but this time we're gonna hold shift and just click it once, uh, the down arrow, boom. So that's, a, that's an increment of 10. Okay, now that I did that, and you might be wondering, what are you doing? Uh, basically, what I'm doing here, we gotta zoom out a little more, is I'm going to line up all these circles. And so I'm gonna select everything here, including the post, that's fine. Just hold shift and click on the post. Now it's deselected. So now we have all these circles selected and only the circles selected. I'm gonna go back to the align tool, make sure we're aligning to the selection. I'm gonna distribute all the objects, uh, vertical distribute center which basically means it's gonna take that selection and space out all the objects evenly. So now we have perfect spacing with all these. I do think those circles are a little big. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna grab them all again, zoom in a little bit, shift click the post. Now we have just the circle selected. And here's kind of a nifty feature. We're gonna go up to object, down to transform, and then uh, we're gonna to go to transform each. What we can do with this guy, um, it already did it of course, is uh, let's let's reset this to 100. Uh, okay, so this is what it's gonna look like. Nothing's gonna happen. If you check mark the preview button, you're gonna see happen what you want to happen. And basically transform each means if you have a number of objects selected, it's going to apply this transformation to each of them individually, which is super nice. If you wanna transform like all these circles at the same time. So I've got them all selected. I'm gonna use the horizontal and we're gonna do 80, I think. I think maybe. Horizontal vertical scale 80, so that's gonna kinda of make them a little bit smaller. Yeah, let's do something like that. And I'm gonna hit okay. So now I've transformed all those and made them a little bit smaller. Super quick way to do that. Last thing I'm gonna do, because all these circles are on top of this post, what I can do is just select everything again, but this time I'm going to essentially uh, subtract all those circles from the post. And I can do that with the Pathfinder options. If I go to Window, down to Pathfinder, this is one case where I would actually rather use Pathfinder than Shape Builder tool. I always use Shape Builder tool, but this one I would rather use Pathfinder. I'm gonna hit this minus front, which basically means it's going to subtract whatever shape is in front from the shape behind, and that's all those little circles from the post. So now we have something that actually looks like a post with all those holes in it. And all we need to do is make sure this is on the very bottom, so I'm gonna click it, right click, arrange, send to back. It's also shift command left bracket or shift control left bracket. Now that it's in the back, I can just drag it over here behind my stop sign. My smart guides are helping me line it up right in the center. Uh, if you wanna make sure it's in the center, just grab them both, click the stop sign, go to the alignment panel, hit that horizontal align center. It's gonna line everything up to the stop sign centered. 
All right, so there it is. We have we have a post. All right, let's shorten this post up a little bit, and then we will also make the stop sign a little bit smaller by uh, holding Shift and Option or Alt on that stop sign and just making it a little bit smaller there. Maybe something like that. I don't know. What do you think? Okay, with every flat design tutorial comes some kind of little shadow element. It kind of adds like a slight bit of realism, although half the time the shadows don't make any sense, kind of like this one here. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to do a rectangle with the rectangle tool, shortcut key M. I'm going to just create a rectangle that I know is going to cover up enough of my sign. That rectangle's white. Let's make it black, just straight black. Okay, and now I'm going to rotate this guy. So make sure you get those double ended arrows, uh, kind of half circle there. Uh, click, rotate, hold shift, and I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees, just like that. And then I'm just going to eyeball this thing somewhere in the middle, so it runs through the middle of my sign-ish. Somewhere right in there. That's good enough. Now I'm going to hold shift and select the sign. So I've got both the sign and this rectangle selected. Now we bring in the shape builder tool, double circle with the pointer over here. Shift M is the shortcut. It sees all these little shapes. I want to get rid of this one. So I'm going to hold option or alt. Notice the minus under the cursor now. Just click and now it's gone. All right. So back to the selection tool. Shortcut key for that is V by the way. Okay. So I got this uh, super opaque shadowy thing. All I want to do with that is take its opacity down to 10%. And so I've got a slight, slight shadow on this. It just kind of adds, it adds a little something to it. And I'm going to add one more something to it. So imagine, imagine you have this stop sign and below it, maybe there's a shadow down here at the bottom. We're going to do that with an ellipse tool, but a really skinny, or with the ellipse tool, but a really skinny ellipse. So the shortcut key for that is L. We can click and hold and grab it here just like that. And I'm going to maybe do, I'm just eyeballing this, like somewhere in here, not the whole width of the stop sign, somewhere in between. Uh, and I'm just going to click and drag across and make a super duper skinny ellipse. Let go. It's all black right now. That's fine. Uh, we do need to center this up. So grab that selection tool. You got this ellipse. Shift click on this post and then click on the post, aligning to that key object like usual. Grab your alignment panel, remember window align if you need to. Uh, key object, okay, I'm gonna horizontal align center. It's gonna move that shadow over to the center. Perfect, I think I want the shadow to the very back, so let's zoom in a little, Command or Control Plus. Uh, you can right click on this or use the shortcut key, uh, but go down to Arrange, Send to Back. And now let's make this something like 15% uh, opacity. So it's a real light gray, right? And then I don't think it should like hit right at the bottom of that post. So maybe we just click it and bump it down with the arrow keys so that the middle-ish of the post is hitting the middle-ish of the ellipse. So we've got like a little shadow down there of the stop sign up top. Uh, how about the last thing we do here is add like a background. Um, you know, a lot of those minimal things, they have like a cool colored background. So let's just go back to that M rectangle tool, create some kind of rectangle around this guy, just like that. It's white. Okay, let's change it. Let's go to the color panel. If we go to window down to color, it's going to pop out that color panel. Remember my favorite little panel. Uh, we're going to drag this sort of hue thing up into the blue area and then let's click something a little bit saturated but a little bit, you know, toned down some. So so kind of over in here, maybe a blue somewhere around there. Hit OK. OK, we got the blue, but we got to send them to the back. So we're going to click on them, right click, arrange, send it to back. There it is. That's a little hot on the blue. Let's take the blue back a notch there. So I'm going to click on it. Double click the fill. Let's bring them back. Uh, let's make them lighter and grayer, maybe. Something like, maybe something like that. Maybe something like that. All right. Now, what you can do is click on this blue shape, Command or Control 2. That's going to lock that in there. Then we can select this entire stop sign. We can right click, go to Group. Okay. So now this stop sign is grouped but we can't click on this background again, so I want to click on it again. So that is Command Option 2 or Command Alt 2 to unlock that background. 
You can also find what's locked and unlocked in your layers panel. All your objects and shapes are over here. Notice we have the group here, you can see it. Uh, we have stop over there, you can see that. We have the rectangle here, you can see it. So like if it's locked right here, you'll see a little lock icon. You can just click on that to unlock it uh, if you don't have those shortcut keys remembered. The reason I did that though was to group this and this here. And then, uh, so I'm going to select both this group and the background, click on that. I'm just going to center it up, you guys. That's all I'm doing right now. So bring out that alignment panel. We're aligning to the background. Center, center, done. There it is. We have a stop sign, sort of flat design. I think I covered everything I wanted to. It was way longer than I meant for it to be. But hey, here's another tutorial for you guys. Let me know if you like this one in the comments below. You got any questions? Got any any? any concerns any any comments whatever i don't i don't care just uh just let me know and also remember i do have an illustrator course it's free on skillshare check it out in the description uh thanks for watching you guys subscribe for more tips and tutorials and i'll see you next time